Welcome to the Five Rivers Podcast. For more information, head to fiveriverschurch.com. We now join our services already in progress. Good morning. Welcome to Five Rivers this morning. It's so great to see everybody. Thank you for joining us. Those of you at home, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, you know, later this morning, we're going to sing a new song that will, that will sing about God's care in our lives and his provision over us. And um, I'm looking forward to that. But let's all stand together and let's just sing out our testimony to him this morning. Amen. I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Oh, my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified testimony this is my testimony come together sons and daughters bought with blood and washed in water sing the praises of the spirit son and father our God will finish what he started Yes, our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come. Oh, let's keep singing. If I'm not dead and you're not done, oh, we believe in. The greater things are still to come. Oh, one more time. If I'm not dead and you're not done, greater things are still to come. Oh, I my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous 
I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. And I know the night won't last. Your word will come to My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I've seen you move, I've seen you move, you move the mountain. Do it.
your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me yet never failed us yet
of time there before the throne of grace majesty before my eyes I'll let it take my breath away a million angels fall face down on the floor all to echo holy is the lord my heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar forever echo holy is the lord a million angels fall face down on the floor oh all to echo God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. And he never sinned, but suffered as if he did. All authority, every victory is yours. honor and glory, worthy of all of our praise, for you overcame. You're Jesus, you're awesome and power forever, awesome and great is your name. power in hand speaking the father's plan sending us out light in this broken land all authority every Bye. 
By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. Oh, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome oh yes we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony everyone overcome oh we will overcome by the blood of the lamb Everyone overcome Savior Worthy of honor and glory Worthy of all of our praise It's you overcame Pure Jesus You're awesome and And Savior, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all of our praise, you overcame. And Jesus, awesome and powerful forever, awesome and great is your name. You overcame. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's honey in the rock, there's water in the stone, there's manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know Everything I need you've got There's honey in the rock Hallelujah His care is over us this morning, amen Let's sing about his provision this morning Hallelujah, let's sing that again There's honey in the rock Water in the stone Manna on the ground No matter where I go I don't need to worry I know oh, everything I need you've got there's honey in the rock we're praying for a miracle thirsty for the living well only you can satisfy Sweetness at the mercy seat. Now I've tasted, it's not hard to see. Only you can satisfy. There's honey in the rock. 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 Freedom. Where the spirit is, bounty in the wilderness, you will always satisfy. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Well, everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock, purpose 
in your plan. Power in the blood, healing in your hands. Started flowing when you said it is done. Oh, everything you did is enough. Yes, I keep looking and I keep finding. You keep giving, you keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. And I keep praying, you keep moving. And I keep praising, and you keep proving. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. And I keep looking, and I keep finding. You keep giving, you keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. And I keep praying, you keep moving. And I keep praising, you keep proving. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, and I'm on the ground, no matter where I go. And I don't need to worry now that I know. Yes, everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Started flowing when you said it is done. Well, Jesus, who you are, is enough. There's honey in the rock. Water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Oh, everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Started flowing when you said it is done. Jesus, who you are, is enough. There's honey in the rock. Honey in the rock. Honey in the rock. Honey in the rock. And oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is. Trust in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He provides for us this morning. Amen. Amen. No matter what, no matter how great the need, he will always provide. Always provide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is so great to see everybody this morning. Thank you for coming out this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and just greet each other. Give them a hello. Give them a smile. Even if you have to muster from deep down within, give them a smile. We'll move into our morning announcements. Five Rivers family. Today is Missions Sunday. Please stop by the missions table in the lobby to take home some correspondence from our missionaries. It's good to know what's going on in their lives so you can more effectively pray for them. Besides the correspondence, there are also plenty of Worldview magazines for you to take home and read. As you know, VBS was rescheduled, so mark your calendars and spread the word that VBS will begin next Sunday, July 24th. We understand that this kind of threw a monkey wrench into everyone's plans. If you were signed up and are unable to volunteer, or if now you're able to volunteer when you couldn't before, please see Melissa in the lobby after service and let her know. We are looking forward to having a great week of VBS starting next Sunday, July 24th. All right, Five Rivers, 
You all have a great week, and I'll see you next Sunday. I love that you clap after announcements. <laughs> I just think that's great. Um, I'm going to start doing announcements. No, no. no something, might tell, something tells me that might be the end of that, right? We're going to let Miss Betsy continue to do the announcements, that's for sure. Hey, a couple of cleanup items. Um, two things in particular. By the way, how are you doing today? You doing all right? You doing good? There you go. Doing all right? Glad you're here. I'm glad you're here, and uh, hopefully you're glad you're here. If you've tuned in, uh, you're glad you're here uh, online. So uh, two things. Number one, my wife actually has to scoot out right after the service, so if you're in the lobby looking for her, you're not going to find her, but uh, Miss Amy has agreed to fill that role. So if any schedule changes in regards to VBS volunteer and if you've walked in today and you haven't seen all these decorations, because we had to change, we decide we're not taking all of the decorations down and putting them back up. And the people that did all the work said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> right? <laughs> so these decorations are going to be here for a couple more Sundays, but uh, no, one, one more Sunday. One more Sunday. So if you want a picture, take a picture, because uh, the train leaves the station a week from Thursday. Right? <laughs> and there was a little blurb on the... Um, uh, the screen there, uh, no Wednesday. There is Wednesday activities this week, okay? So everyone say yes. yes. There is Wednesday activities at Five Rivers Church this coming Wednesday. All right, so, uh, and then the following Wednesday, of course, that week will be VBS. So hope to see you here, whether adult, youth, children, whatever, this coming Wednesday here in just a few days. Amen. We look forward to that. That is for sure. Um, wow. I did, you, some of you are on Facebook and you saw it's a little hard to believe. So this past week, uh, my family and I finished four years, started our fifth year here, hanging out with the great people of Five Rivers Church. Does that seem right? So, and welcome back to Billy. She's been in her homeland of Turkey for the last month, the beautiful land of Turkey, and um, I'd like to go someday. I love to see Yes, and if you've read Revelation, the seven churches, Revelation is located in her homeland. That'd be a fun, who wants to go? Sign us up. Fly, take a boat, we'll just get there any way we can, right? That's for sure. Anyhow, it's a joy to start uh, our fifth year here with you. You are an amazing blessing, and it's a joy to journey along in our faith together with the great people of Five Rivers Church. You know, I was saying to, uh, it was Bill the other day, we were in a con conversation. I was in a conversation with Bill Stevenson. Just, uh, I just have concern over our congregation. I just know that a uh, number of people are facing just great battles whether it's, it's a sickness or a family issue uh, boy, there's just a number of things that, well, you know, uh, we love you, care about you, and I have concern over a number of things that you're facing. So I, I believe, I'm hoping that today's message is going to be encouraging for you. And I believe today's message can be encouraging for you. Uh, if you're facing something I want you to know God's got uh, great power and ability for you. Amen? And you're going to have a chance to, I believe, receive that before the day's over. Well, in case you have forgotten, uh, you were given an assignment to read the book of Ephesians. Who all's read Ephesians? Ah, oh, yeah, we're, we're doing better. So now remember, if you ha we're up to three times, so if you haven't read it yet, you've got to read it three times this week. <laughs> all right, so... Get into God's Word, get God's Word into you, and you will reap the benefits of that, that's for sure. Well, the Word of the Lord today for us is power. Power, amen? As you know, or maybe you don't know, if you fall asleep, you know, on occasion, on a Sunday, or when you're tuning in, um, we're in this series, Church and Culture, where we are using the writings of the Apostle Paul 
for our Sunday messages. Here's a little reminder why. Paul lived and he wrote what he had to write in a day of great spiritual darkness and difficulty. And he wanted his readers to know. Somebody say no. He wanted his readers to know that in spite of the spiritual darkness and difficulty of their day, that they could shine the light of Jesus and that they could stand. Somebody say stand. stand. They could stand strong and be vibrant in their faith in Jesus Christ no matter what was going on in the world around them. Secondly, Paul wrote about the return of Christ, didn't he? And he wanted his readers to be ready. Somebody say ready. ready. So here we are today. What's today? Uh, July 17, 2022. And we find ourselves living in a day of great spiritual darkness and difficulty. And I want you to know. Somebody say no. No. I want you to know that you can shine the light of Jesus Christ and that you can stand strong in a vibrant faith in Christ no matter what is going on in the world around you. And number two, Jesus Christ is coming back and I want all of us to be ready. Somebody say ready. Do you want to be ready when Jesus comes? Yes, we do. Well, we've made it through the first 14 verses in three weeks of, of Ephesians 1. Verses 1 and 2, Paul opens with a salutation of grace and peace to his readers. That now includes us, if you've read it, right, or heard it. Verses 3 through 14 is a praise for spiritual blessings in Christ. So verses 15 through 23, which is today is a passage of thanksgiving and prayer. Well, let's pray. Lord, we have read your word. We've read what your servant Paul has written. And I pray today in Jesus' name that you would speak to our hearts and change our lives and fill us with the power of the living God. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let's get right to it. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. So as the pastor of an amazing group of people, that's you. Okay, just say it. That's us. Yes. As the pastor of an amazing group of people, that's you, I know exactly how Paul feels with the gratitude that he has expressed here in these verses that we just read. In fact, there's days that I'll walk around the buildings here or the campus and, and think to myself and even say out loud, I, I love it here. Just love it here. And... and um, Yet not be ready to leave some days for the day. And then it hits me. I've got an amazing family at home that I love. I've got to get home to my family. need to get home to them, right? And I've also said out loud, you know, I I love it here. Why would I just ever want to leave uh, here? Now, I've learned to never say never to God because he doesn't handle nevers very well. So I'm not going to say that. All right. Um, But you know why? See, Paul's thanksgiving here for the spiritual progress of the Ephesian Christians, it arises out of what he just wrote in the first, or the the two verses previous to what we just read, verses 13 and 14 of Ephesians chapter 1, which is where we left off last Sunday. But in way of a reminder, here are those verses, verses 13 and 14, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. 
So really what's going on here, 13, 14, really in Ephesians 1, is good news has been brought to Paul, who is in Rome at the time, about the continuing faith and the love that's being displayed by the Christians at Ephesus. So he's pretty, he's pretty pumped up about that. And, and the faith that he speaks of that we read here in verse 15 in today's text, it finds its focus in Christ and it expresses itself in love to others. Such love, in fact, is, is evidence of genuine faith. You may remember back when we were in Galatians from chapter 5, verse 6, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. So in verse 16, Ephesians 1, verse 16, Paul is just all over this good news. He's received this good news, and he's all over this good news about the believers in Ephesus, and, and he responds with gratitude, and he responds with prayer for these people. And I think it's important for us, to he, for, for us here to pick up, he, he, everything's good right now, or this is a good report, but Paul does not see this as an excuse to stop praying. You know, God's good, things are going great, we don't feel the urgency to pray sometimes, right? Paul does not see this as an excuse because things are good to stop praying because everything's okay. He realizes there is great potential in these believers at Ephesus to, to build on, okay? So Paul assures the Ephesians of his nonstop remembrance of them in his prayers, and he does this by, by both ways of, of thanksgiving and intercession for them. Now, in verse 16, when he writes the word remembering, he's remembering them. Some translations, or the way you could flesh out that word, is making mention, or making mention of. And it implies that those for whom Paul is, is, was interceding, he was actually naming them before God. That's what he was doing. So, you know, today it would be like, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Bill and Amy. Amen. I'll take it. He'll take it, he said, right? Yeah. Lord, in Jesus' name, I lift him up to you. God, I pray for Jenny in Jesus' name. And Lord, don't forget Heather, right? And Jack and Pat in Jesus' name. And, and Terry Boehner, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for my family. I lift up my wife, Melissa and Josiah and my daughters, Sarah and Hannah. God, be with Jerry today. You know what he's facing in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray over Abraham and Annie and Rodney and Diane and, and God, the Thorpe family. In Jesus' name, God, I lift them up before you. Lord, I pray for Dottie and, and all of the Giesing family and Paul and Jan and, and Lord for Billy and, and well, just the whole Yates clan. Oh God. It takes a while to name. That's a long prayer session right there, right? So Lord, if you can just put them all in there together, he can sort all that out, right? But Lord, in Jesus' name, Stephanie, in Jesus' name. And, yeah, don't forget John, Lord. We're back there in the Making sure that sounds good. But the, you see, that's, that's, what, that's what it says here. When I'm remembering you, I'm making mention of you. It, it's saying God is, t or Paul is taking their names before God, or these individuals by name. How does it make you feel when you know that someone takes your name before God in prayer? That's a great feeling. When you know someone is, is taking your name. Now listen, if I didn't call your name today, I, you, know, you know what I'm saying? It, come to me afterwards and I'll pray over you, all right? All right. I've got to be done here in a few minutes. All right. Don't want to leave anyone out. I pray for you, all right? I want you to know that. Just trying to make a little illustration, but now I'm starting to think, no, I, I don't want anybody to feel left out, right? Who loves me? All right, this way. No one to raise their hand. Okay, I got two over here that love me. All right. 
Did my wife raise her hand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes you feel great when you know that, that a saint, right, someone that loves the Lord is, is praying for you, taking your name before God. And now, come on, let, let me go southern on you here a little bit. I'm going to throw a little y'all in there, right? Some of y'all <laughs> wore some people out in prayer, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But come on, is there anybody in the house today? Do you have someone that never gave up on you? They kept going back to the throne room, back to God, crying your name out, and you're here today because they kept calling your name before the Lord. All right, now it's your turn. Name some other people. All right, Paul adds this in verse 17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Here's another question for you. Is there anyone in your life that just fires you up in your life for Christ because of their example? They're like Paul. You, you can follow them as they are following Jesus. See, what Paul does here now is, is, is he begins to add fuel and, and add to their momentum so they can go further. So that these believers can, can go higher in the things of the Lord and in their faith in Jesus. So the Apostle Paul addresses his constant prayer on their behalf to the only one who's capable of answering those prayers. And then he writes here, you know, to the glorious Father. That's who he's praying to, right? You know, glorious Father was a typical Hebrew expression back in the day that points both to God's essential being and to what proceeds from his being in his mercy. Paul is praying that, that his readers... Now you know I want you to read Ephesians. And it wouldn't hurt to read it more than once. See, Paul is praying that his readers may be fully endowed with the Holy Spirit. It, so pray to receive the Spirit more than just on Pentecost Sunday, amen? You see, God, God has already made provision. He's already made provision for this, but it was necessary that they themselves sh should be enlivened with the spiritual powers of what we just read, of wisdom and revelation, or some translations may use the word vision for revelation there. So revelation in this verse it, it seems to, it refers to, to the insight and the discernment that the Spirit of God brings into the mysteries of divine truth. And all of this is so that they and that you and I may get to know God more completely. That's what he says, that you may know him better, right? Right? All of this so we can know God more completely. So let's look at this. Your screen. To know him better, verse 17, is the fullness of knowledge that you and I can, can acquire through personal acquaintance, through personal relationship with Jesus. Now hear me today. If you don't know Jesus any better than when you first received his truth, do you really know him? Do you really know him? How about this? Have you ever, you ever found out something from someone that you've known for years? Right? Could be a family member. Could be a spouse even. You've known, you've known an individual for years. You ever found out something about someone after many years of knowing them and it just, it, it shocks you. It's like, say What? I've known you for 34 years, and I never knew that about you, right? That ever happened to you? Is, am I the only one? Yeah, so I, okay, I see some hands waving at me. And it, it's just surprising, because you think in your mind, I should have known that about you, right? You, you feel like left out knowing that for the last X amount of years. See, just like our relationships in life, 
there are things in God to be discovered. Because here's the thing. If you knew that person for 15 years or so and you didn't know that and you found it out then, you would have never found out th that thing if somewhere leading up to that point that relationship ended. So the longer you're in a relationship, the more you can find out about an individual. And just like our relationships in life, there are things in God to be discovered only after being and continue to be acquainted with Him more and more and more and more as you live your life in Christ. You should know some things about Jesus better this time next month than you know right now. You've got to secure that acquaintance. You've got to continue in that relationship. That's why on a daily basis, you get into God's Word. You get God's Word into you. You continue in prayer. You continue studying. You continue your relationship with God and with God's people. You should know Jesus better this time next month certainly next year than you do now. Can I encourage you today? Get more acquainted with Him. Get closer. Get into God's Word. Get God's Word into you. You're going to find for the rest of your life a mere... For everything you know about Jesus, there's a, probably at least a thousand you don't. Find them out. By continuing in that relationship. All right, verse 18. Paul writes, I pray... That the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you or to which he has called you to the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Oh, I love this. But Paul begins to take his readers on this spiritual mountain climbing expedition in this verse. And, and he starts with this figure of speech that that the eyes of your heart. He starts with this figure of speech of, uh, uh, it's an expression of an inner awareness. Okay, that you may know this stuff, this inner awareness. What's he say? The eyes of your heart. Right, so when you see heart in Scripture, heart in Scripture, it's, it's the seat of thought and moral judgment, it, it, as well as feeling. So... This deep interior enlightenment provided by the Holy Spirit, it leads the believer to realize all that God has provided for you. There's three things in particular that he highlights in these couple of verses. Number one, calling. You've got the call of God on your life to hope. So calling here is regarded as a pledge of hope. And see, the, the call has already taken place, yet it represents an ongoing calling. He has called you to hope, and we'll see that again when we get to Thessalonians. And, and this calling to hope, it, it, it looks to the future since it's attached to the blessed hope of eternal glory that we're going to get to experience. And secondly, Paul wants his readers to appreciate that they will inherit the wealth of God himself. All this stuff we want God to do for us. And Paul's no, you're going to inherit God himself. You see, the, the old Israel in the Old Testament, they were promised and, and, and given an earthly inheritance, weren't they? Canaan land, what's now Israel. The new Israel... That's us. That's the church. The New Testament church of Jesus Christ is given an a promise and an inheritance in heaven. It's the everlasting Canaan rest of glory that all of the saints that have received Christ is assured of on that great day. It's part of the hope we have, isn't it? And number three is going to come out in verse 19 in a minute. And the third thing that Paul wants his readers to recognize is the enormous power of God. The enormous power of God. It, it, it is presented in verse 19 as incomparably great. The idea is that this unimaginable power that has its source in God is is directed 
toward all who believe in him as its intended destination. It's like you have a bullseye (laughs) painted on your head that God is aiming his power toward you. Now, should I leave this here for the rest of the message, or is it a little distracting? All right, let's take a vote. Who thinks I should leave it here? All right. Who thinks I should? My wife says take it off, so she, she, her vote's greater than, than all of you, okay? But it's like you've got a bullseye on your head that God is aiming his power towards you. Toward you, the power of God. Now, we're going to get into verse 19, but I want to repeat 18 before we do it real quick. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the glorious riches or of his glorious or the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Now, right into verses 19 through 21. And his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. You see, what Paul has done here is he's grabbed as many synonyms as the hands of his mind could get a hold of to pile up this vocabulary of divine power, and now he shows where it is most impressively enacted. It's the resurrection of Christ and his subsequent exaltation to absolute authority. We sang a lot about it today. See, Paul has no hesitation here in ascribing the resurrection of Jesus to the Father in accordance with other scriptures, because this is a theme woven in God's Word. And the Father and Son, they are so at one in this thing as they are in all things that our Lord Jesus himself, in regards to his own life, could claim, as recorded in John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, I laid down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. Now, that's authority. To say, I'm going to lay my life down. For you, and I'm going to take it up again. I have authority to do that, but no one else has that, right? You see, Paul links with the resurrection, the ascension, and the heavenly session of Christ. God not only raised his son from the dead, but he exalted him to the seat of power in the heavenly realms. You know, this is an illusion that we find in verse 1 uh, to, uh, to Psalm uh, chapter 110, verse 1, where it says, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The exaltation of the king of Israel as the Lord's anointed was seen as, as finding its ultimate application in Jesus Christ. So in the verse we just read, where, where it talks about right hand in this verse, you see, that indicates a symbol of authority. And, and the heavenly realms that, that we just read in verse 20 is where he exercises that authority that he has. And then the, the far above that we just read from verse 21, it's, it's not a dimensional expression but it simply indicates the superiority and the supremacy of Christ. So in those verses where we read where we read rule, authority, power, and dominion, they're not to be classified in a graded series, but all of these show the fullness of God's 
authority, of Jesus, his son's authority. Now, if you understand Hebrew culture, these titles did reflect in Hebrew culture these various degrees of angels in Jewish thought because some believe that angels were, were believed to uh, control humanity and human destiny. But that's not what we see here. Paul sees Christ as all-controlling with absolute authority because he is infinitely superior. This is amazing who Christ is and who we have in Christ. Look here, verses 22 and 23. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Who's the most powerful person you know? Now, don't say Jesus. We, we know that. But in, in your life, okay? Who, it, it, someone at work, someone in your family, someone that you know. Who's the most powerful person you know in your life? And how, how is that person's authority exercised? How do they use that? Okay? You see, the Apostle Paul here in Ephesians, he continues, he continues to underline the, the exaltation of Jesus Christ. And Paul not only highlights the supremacy of Christ, but also the subjection of all things under him. Somebody say, all things. All right? Now listen, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, it's easy for us to think that since Jesus became God in the flesh, that he's just a better version of us. No, no, no. That is not so. Yes, he became God in the flesh. He became Emmanuel with us. But to think that Jesus is just a better version of us is not the right thought. No, no, no. He is still the creator of all. Okay? Not only that, he is still the one and only who has is, is the Satan conquering victor savior of the world that's jesus he's not just a better version of us he's so much more jesus christ is still at the lord god almighty all right we can't lose sight of that so when we read this passage to understand who he is and who he's made himself to us is a powerful powerful thought in our lives and even more powerful experience and listen it gets better Paul is stating that Jesus Christ in his exaltation over the universe is God's gift to the church. Wow. Can you say that? Wow. Right? Can you say it backwards? Wow. All right. Yeah. He is the head over every power and authority We'll see that again when we get to Col- or, yeah, Colossians chapter 2. And as such, he's bestowed on the church. Who's the church? We are. Us. Or the new word that we started a few weeks ago, usins. Right? Usins are the church. You see, there is given to the church, and for the church's benefit, there is given to us a head over all things. The church, therefore, has authority and power to overcome all opposition because our leader is the Lord of all. Amen? Some of y'all are sleeping, and you're not excited about that. I'm excited that, that... My Savior is the Lord of all, that I'm a part of the church, that the one that reigns over the universe has been bestowed upon me and upon us. And in verse 23, the church is described as the body of Christ. He is the head, we are the body. So the church is not an institution. We are a living organism. And we exist and function only by our vital relationship with the head of the church, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. 
The church, which is the body of Christ, is further described in the passage that we just read as the fullness of him. You are the fullness of him, what did we just read, who fills everything in every way. And here we see that the church contains the fullness of Christ in that his life, his gifts, his blessings are bestowed upon us. Should have brought my cooler back, right? Is all that he is, his life, his giftings, his blessings, his hope, his power, his faith, his healing, his deliverance, all that comes with Jesus, he bestows on the church. The church is filled with and by Christ as his body. The church manifests Jesus to the world as he fills the church with himself and with all of the gifts that he bestows upon us. And Paul prays. Paul prays for the readers here that the riches of our inheritance would be, would be revealed to us. See, he wants us to discover, as he has, that, that as people in Christ, we have every blessing. We have every resource. We have every power at our disposal that we need, that we could ever imagine. So my encouragement to you today is don't go through this life and don't go through a faith journey without realizing what you have in Jesus Christ. Because you have, as we sang earlier, everything you need in him. Brian, would you come back, please? In addition, Paul wants us to have a strong sense of our identity in Christ. So here's a couple of questions, a few more questions for you today. Do you have a goal? In your relationship with Jesus. Okay. You've accepted his salvation. He's your savior. He's your Lord. You're a servant. You're his child. Do you have a goal. In your relationship with Christ. Now we understand that. Because we have goals in every area of our lives. You know, If you're a kid. Well I have a goal. I want to graduate. Right. Or I have a goal. I want to go to such and such a place for school. Learn such and such a degree. So I can get such and such a job because I have a goal to earn such and such amount of money so I can buy stuff. That's my goal, to be a stuff buyer, right? Or to live here, whatever. But th they're goals. Uh, I, I have a goal. I want to get married. I want to have children. I want to raise them in the goodness of the Lord and, and uh, so they can take good care of me when I retire, right? <laughs> a little role reversal there, Right? Goals. You have goals in life, this and that and the third. But what, what about your relationship with Jesus? What's your goal in terms of how well you know him, how acquainted with him you become, how much you know these powers that we've, that we've read from Paul's writings today? Do you have a goal in your relationship with Christ? Here's another question for you. Do you realize really whose you are and who you are in Christ? Because when you do, oh baby, it's awesome. Do you realize whose you are and who you are in Christ? If not, or maybe you once knew and the stuff of life just keeps happening and I'm going to talk about that in a moment and you've forgotten whose you are and who you are in Christ so that leads to this question do you realize and experience in your day to day life that the all authority that has been given to Jesus he desires to pass that on to you why he came from heaven to earth 
and exercised his authority to lay down his life and continued to exercise his authority to take his life up again. And then he had to go and send his spirit until he comes back. He did all of that because he desires to share that authority, that dominion, that power with you. Would you stand with me in the house of the Lord today? So here's a question for you. Who needs the resurrection power? That's what he associated with. So the power that raised Christ from the dead can dwell in you. That's, that's, what, it, that's what the offer here is. I wonder if there's anyone here today, whether in the house or watching, there's something in your life. It could be physical. It could be emotional. It could be spiritual. It could be something in your family. There is something in your life that you need the resurrection power of God to. And, and you, you need a bullseye on that thing. It's a loss. It's, it's a trial. It's, it's a tribulation. It's an ache in your heart. It's a physical infirmity. It's a relationship gone bad. Is there anyone that needs the resurrection power of something in your life today for? Because here's the thing, believer. We're earthbound until Jesus gets us out of here. You know what that means? The troubles of life are not going away dark days, the dark and evil days aren't going to go away until Jesus said, until the Father says, I'm done. Let's put a stop to it. Sickness, disease, difficulties, darkness, turmoil, the things of this life that we face, they're not going away. Be not deceived. But that is precisely why you need the power of God. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world with all of this other stuff. Since it's not going away, we need the power. Since it's not going away, he's offered us the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We're still going to be abused by others. We're going to be victimized by others. Stuff is going to happen because we live on this earth where this evil stuff happens. We need the power, and you are a bullseye for the power of God in your life. He doesn't want to withhold it from us. He wants to share it with us. If you've got anything going on in your life, you see the altar is lined with these today. There's something going on in your life and you want to be a bullseye for the power of God. Uh, you can take as many as you want. My son Josiah, who did this for us earlier, he's got more and we've got more in the office There's a, for everything you need, right? But if there's something going on in your life right now and you, you don't have to come and you can come and get it and take it with you and stick it on whatever and you know, if some of you leave here today and someone stuck one of these on you, we'll know how to pray for it, right? Yeah. If there's anything going on in your life you need God's power for, you can come, you can take one of these and go, or you can come and you can kneel and do business with God. As Brian and the worship team sings, come, you're a bullseye for the power of God. And his power is greater than that need you're facing right now. If you need God's power, come on. Come and get a sticker. Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love. Destined to die, poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned suffered as if he did all authority every victory is yours all authority every victory Savior, worthy. 
awesome and great is your name. You overcame. Power in hand, speaking the Father's plan. Sending us out, light in this broken land. All authority, every victory is yours. All authority, every victory is yours. Say Aren't you glad you know the one who overcame? 
Lord, I pray that the power of God would fall upon us as individuals and as a congregation and as a part of your church in this day that we live in. Lord, that we would go in the power and see your great conquering victory in the key areas of our lives and that you'd fill us with a greater power than all and any resistance against us. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you're welcome to stay here and pray and praise as long as you want. If you do have a VBS volunteer change, see Amy. And I hope to see you right here Wednesday night and right back in here Sunday morning. Blessings on you. Go in the power, the resurrection power of Jesus. It's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't know. If you've never visited us at Five Rivers, we want to invite you to this week's services with ministry for the entire family. For location information, visit us online at fiveriverschurch.com.